Good morning. It's great to see you today. Welcome to Weekly Momentum. This is a, a weekly video blog that uh, we put out from Momentum Ministries to, uh, to put a little momentum into your week. And I'm Scott Wade. Uh, I'm the president of Momentum Ministries. I'm an evangelist in the Church of the Nazarene. I'm glad to have you on with me today. But remember, at Momentum Ministries, our goal is to, uh, to help you attain, maintain, and regain spiritual momentum. Well, today we are finishing up with a series of lessons called The Four Robes of the Saints. And although it has really alarmed my daughters, I'm going to be here. I'm finishing up giving you some, some wardrobe advice. Our theme verse has been Revelation 7, 14, where John is, uh, is talking to the angel in heaven. And uh, he sees a great multitude around the throne of God. And he asks, well, who are these? And the angel says, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. We've covered that. The great tribulation is, is the, uh, the curse that's been on the, the entire earth uh, since the beginning of, of, of time, since the, the uh, fall of Adam and Eve. But he says, these are the ones who are coming out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes. They've made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's a great multitude. No one can number them. There are so many who have gathered around the throne of God who are praising the Lord together. Now, we are, have looked at the four robes of the saints, and we, we started with uh, talking about filthy rags, and that's what uh, what we have to, all our sins are like filthy rags, the prophet Isaiah said, and, and uh, we have nothing really to offer God in that way. We don't look good, and we don't smell good, we don't act good, and uh, we need the grace of God. That's why our second robe is the robe of Christ's righteousness, and Christ comes into our lives, and he covers us, with his righteousness. He makes us righteous. He, we might become, the scripture says, the righteousness of God. So, so uh, Jesus covers us with his robe of righteousness. And then last week we saw how um, the next robe that we wear on this uh, progression of our wardrobe are righteous deeds. These robes, uh, John said, uh, or the angel said to John in heaven, these robes are the righteous deeds of the saints. Well, today we're going to uh, we're going to revisit heaven, and we're going to see a great multitude again gathered around the the uh, throne of God, and they are wearing heavenly wedding garments. They're in heaven. They're out of the great tribulation. The journey is over. <laughs> the wardrobe progression is complete, and uh, they've renewed their wardrobe all along the way until this great moment in heaven, gathered around the throne of God. And uh, we see in our theme verse, and uh, we saw in, in uh, Revelation 7, 14, these are the ones who have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. But we can go on to another few verses in Revelation. In Revelation 19, we read, The angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He said to me, these are the true words of God. And here they are around the throne of God. Their wardrobes have been renewed all along the way. And then we will see Jesus. Going on in Revelation 19 with verse 11, uh, the, uh, uh, John the, the Revelator said, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and one sitting on it. It's called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. John saw Jesus. We too will see Jesus. John goes on to say, His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He's clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Reminded of that scripture, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. He's talking about Jesus. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. John saw Jesus one day in our wedding garments around the throne of God. We will see Jesus. And, and I imagine there'll be a, a multitude of us uh, remembering that song. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life, life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till you see Christ. But you know, uh, there's more when we get there that I, I want to read some verses to you from uh, from the uh, closing chapters of the book of Revelation. And I, I'm just going to read these straight out of the Word of God. And 
I want you to, to let them speak to your heart today. John said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, having the wedding garment on. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Then on in Revelation 22, we read these words. The angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Down verse 12 in Revelation 22, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. Again, he says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. What a day that will be. Our robes have been washed white in the blood of the Lamb. And now we enter the city clothed in the wedding garments. Jesus told a parable in Matthew 22 about a master who, uh, who had a wedding banquet for his son. And when he went in to greet the guests, he found a guest who did not have on the wedding garments. And that was uh, unusual and really uncalled for because wedding garments were provided for those who couldn't provide them for themselves. And uh, uh, the master of the wedding said, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? We can't get in to that wedding without a wedding garment. But the good news is that Jesus provides that garment. It's the robe of his righteousness. We add to that. We add to that our righteous deeds. And then God arrays us as a bride adorned for her husband. Filthy rags are no longer a part of our wardrobe. Never again will, I don't think we'll even think about those things anymore but we will be with Jesus and we will see him. We've traded those filthy rags for his robes of righteousness. We've completed our wardrobe with those righteous deeds of the saints. And now we've received our reward, the wedding garment. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for this wardrobe progression that we are that we are enabled to have through Jesus Christ. The filthy rags of our sins have been removed, replaced with the robes of Christ's righteousness. We have fulfilled the work you've given us to do, and we are fulfilling it now, and one day we will be welcomed into your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the robes that you give us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me today on Weekly Momentum. I hope this does put a little momentum in your week. Continue to pray for, for the work of Momentum Ministries. We have a lot of exciting things happening. As I mentioned uh, before, we have a couple revivals uh, booked for early this spring in April uh, 15th and 16th. 
We're going to Shepherd Church of the Nazarene in Lexington, South Carolina. And then it's on up to Southern Ohio on April 22nd and 26th. We'll be going to West Union, Ohio, Church of the Nazarene. But I also have open dates if you or someone you know would like to call me for a revival. Uh, visit our website at MomentumMinistries.org to find out more and, describe, and to subscribe to our, uh, uh, our weekly blog and our daily email devotional. Also get some uh, information about our weekly podcast, Casual Conversations. If you want to give to our ministry, you can do that right on the website with the donate button. And as I said, please pray for us. God bless you. Have a great week filled with spiritual momentum.